Hey, I'm Steve Watson here at uh, Seven Day Farm. I had a great question from a student today, and I thought uh, uh, I'd share uh, an explication uh, after the fact with everybody uh, and uh, maybe go into a little bit more detail. And the question, which of course I'll paraphrase because he's not here to ask it, was, uh, you know, so in a real situation, so a fight or uh, sparring or push hands, like uh, so uh, extemporaneous, he said, uh, do you think to yourself, well, I'm going to do, you know, uh, Fair Lady works the shuttles. Am I going to do Pong? Am I going to do single whip? Uh, and I said, well, no, that's, that's not really what is happening, uh, particularly uh, for a specific reason that um, that's going to really put a delay in my actions uh, to kind of... Uh, map out an idea and code that idea in, in the, you know, the nervous system and then, you know, fire the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the correct things to do it. Uh, so that seems uh, a little problematic. Um, but, <clears throat> and of course, we also know that uh, doing something as a brain is going to be a little bit messier than it might be in my usual practice, particularly if I have like a, a drill where I'm repeating the same thing a lot, like an etude. Uh, or often in a form, we're going to see something just get uh, better and better and better in your Daolu practice. Um, so I said, well, what I'm doing in that sort of extemporaneous situation, like sparring or push hands or something, is I'm consciously deciding to do a particular thing. Uh, but really that is a, it's, it's a quality, it's a jing, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a energetic output or, or effect that I'm trying to have. And uh, we know it's not gonna look quite as neat and nice as it might um, in the form for a variety of reasons. One, of course, is you're under duress. Two, you might be sort of out of position alignment or uh, impaired in some way in terms of time to bring the thing to shape or impaired because you already got punched um, or your feet aren't in the appropriate place, but they're close enough to try and do it. Uh, so, you know, we tend to practice um, uh, in our forms uh, to, to move towards perfection, but we have to understand that when we have an extemporaneous expression, it's uh, gonna uh, benefit from having practice towards perfection, but it's not, never gonna see perfection. So I said, uh, look, if I said to you that your design constraints are to, you know, design, um, I had a great blue hair and just flying by. <laughs> it's funny, I was just talking about, you know, flights here or starting to. If your design constraints um, as, you know, uh, an engineer were to, uh, uh, design an airplane that had to carry an awful lot of weight. The final product, you know, if you're successful in designing a final product, uh, or if you're if you design a final product which proves successful, like over time or in a comp competition, like in a bidding process, um, or through testing, uh, we're going to expect that most of, maybe all of the designs are gonna share some features in common because the design constraint is to carry an awful lot of weight. Had the design been constrained been to be very fuel efficient, for example, we're going to expect to see that any successful design is gonna be fairly lightweight, for example. Um, it, whereas if uh, the design constraint it has to, is that it has to be very armored, we might expect that it'll be very heavy and therefore not fuel efficient compared to the average airplane. And now, particularly when we have a few design constraints, you know, a few or many, um, we can expect uh, that the final successful um, uh, um, result uh, will be uh, quite similar to one another, A any successful um, thing is going to be uh, share things in common with one another. So, for example, if I said to you that we need to have a very um, uh, energy uh, uh, fuel efficient aircraft, we can all expect that that final aircraft that I produce is not going to be um, a, a cube. That's not going to happen. I mean, that that's not going to make sense just in terms of aerodynamics. Um, 
Whereas if I said to you just to very simply as a design constraint, hey, your airplane has to be red, but design any airplane you want, we could expect that what succeeds in that design constraint, which is very narrow, uh, very small, minor, is every type of aircraft under the sun might be submitted in my context, right? Whereas if I say it has to be armored, it has to be lightweight, it has to be fuel efficient, it has to be able to fly very fast, it has to be aerobatically maneuverable or whatever. Okay, now that's an awful lot of design constraints. And we can imagine that um, you essentially see parallel evolution among any successful contenders. They're going to share some features in common. So if uh, I'm in an extemporaneous situation and, you know, so I'm sparring or what have you, and my design constraint is that I need to receive this energy without losing contact with it, without losing my route, and I have to lead it behind me, for example, we're only going to end up with certain qualities that uh, prove successful, right? And we might say in Tai Chi Chuan, those are all going to be what we call Lu Jin, just for example, like that's what that energy is going to be. Um, so what I'm doing when I'm in that extemporaneous situation is I'm not saying to myself, uh, all right, uh, I need to do that move just the way I do it in my form practice. I'm trying to express that energy. And if I do that energy somewhat successfully, it's going to look quite a bit like the sort of practiced and perfectible version that we'll see in a form on the cover of the book when somebody's practicing. So it's important for me to remember that the practices that we do in our, you know, in our form and our Dalu practice, um, these are vessels for these principles. These are containers for these principles and these particular design constraints. So of course, they're going to look a certain way. If we said that the, the intention of a particular move that we're developing is to you know, break a femur, we can imagine that it's not going to be as simple as closing the fingers. That just physics isn't going to allow that to be strong enough to break a femur. So we'd imagine that it's going to involve a, a lot more leverage, so a longer lever arm and stronger work on those lever arms. It might involve body weight or speed or something like that or some combination. And so, you know, the design restrictions that we might find for breaking a femur might not be very narrow. So a lot of successful um, results can come about from that. But if the design restraints were that it has to be done on one leg, it has to be done with only one hand, it has to be done while maintaining posture, it has to be done while moving slowly or something like that, then, okay, those design constraints are gonna shift all resultant um, successful um, uh, results of that uh, uh, constraint or set of constraints into s some fairly similar categories. So ultimately in an extemporaneous setting, I am saying to myself, well, I want to meet this set of constraints. I wanna express this sort of energy. And I also know that it's gonna look very much like the way that I purposely practice it in my form practice and my everyday drills, because that is a container, that's a vessel for those design constraints. But in the moment, I am just practicing and expressing myself towards the constraints. And I essentially newly evolve, uh, hopefully a successful um, meeting of those constraints. So I'm going to just check my notes because I, so the general idea is just that mission drives design, right? That's, that's what we're looking to say. Um, yeah, successful solutions to a given and particular problem will often share form of features Good designs, traditional designs, lasting designs contain effective possibilities. So I say that meaning, you know, the things that we've seen practice, the things that have been passed on, these things, you know, because they're traditional, they're, they're lasting or they're good designs or some combination, all of those, they contain effective possibilities. They don't necessarily point to the only possibility. But again, the more design constraints we have, the narrower the resultant um, winners of that uh, con set of constraints or co the contest of constraints are going to be, right? So what we do want to 
do is we want to learn the passed along designs as containers for the principles. So, um, you know, to, to, to use that example, right, when we do cow, the cow gin is, is not this shape, right? This is not cow gin. This is how I practice cow gin, but cow gin is not the shape. The shape is a vessel to um, practice the possibilities contained within the, um, the successful um, uh, nominees to meet those design constraints that Cowgen is presented as. So hopefully that has helped and hasn't made you too confused, but I'm doing my best to share a little bit with you. So thank you very much. And uh, please feel free to uh, share this and comment and uh, give me feedback and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. Thanks.